Welcome back everyone under Southern Skies. There is no point imaging low targets. You get too much chromatic aberration guiding, even if you can get guiding working well. Or at least that's sort of what we used to think. But um, it's just gotten a little bit easier with the latest update of PIX Insight, which um, allows you to stack... Um, images that have come from a one-shot color camera in their separate RGMB channels. Um, if, you, if you do that and then simply combine them, you'll find that this kind of thing here is gone. Don't believe me? Have a look. So this particular image we're staring at now with this um, horrible star with a nice blue fringe at the top and a lovely red fringe at the bottom and in fact all these red stars here you can see are almost rainbows um, this is in M33 triangulum um, and you can see that the chromatic aberration extends all the way through across the image of course and it really wouldn't matter try as I might um, no amount of processing is going to tidy that up, um, I would have to think. And in fact, I know that's true because I did process it um, in this form the first time and I wasn't, I wasn't real happy. But, you know, I, I wanted to have a look. I was excited to have been able to image this galaxy. It, it only rose about 20, 25 degrees um, above my northern horizon, which is never um, fun for my for my mount um, but I did manage to get 20 something maybe 25 um, four minute exposures at 1000 millimeters so anyway that's that all that's uh, all that I've done to this is um, a histogram stretch and then curve saturation just to be able to really which is what you usually do anyway to bring the saturation out of the galaxy. Um, but you can see no background extractions happened. Um, it's um, really just been stretched and curved saturationed. And there's the one shot color image. What I tried the second time around, I'll, I'll show you now, um, a really easy way to get rid of this now before i do that i will say that i've i've tried to solve chromatic aberration before and and it's worked okay by taking an image like this splitting it into its red green and blue channels aligning each of those channels to each other i think i usually align red and blue to green and then recombining and that that does a fair job of addressing chromatic aberration um, uh, and who knows, maybe the script is doing a similar process, but on each sub and then stacking the split channels together. That's what I suspect is happening. Um, so here's how we access it in batch processing, weighted batch pre-processing. Now the new feature that makes this possible, um, you'll see here I've just got a previous project loaded up. Um, you can see that it, there's color filtered array images, they're one shot color images. Um, when we click on this post process tab, you'll see that it says, okay, you've got 18 frames of RGB. But in this configuration box here, we have some options. You can choose to just stack it as RGB. You can choose to only end up with separate red, green, and blue channels, or you can you can do both. Um, and doing both is what I did to to generate the images that I'm using in this video. But that's the key. If we click on that, what we're going to get are three monochrome monochrome images, um, red, green, and blue. Um, and all that needs to happen this this is those here, red, green, blue. I've renamed them to make it easier. Um, without doing anything to them, um, you can just combine them, and they're perfectly aligned to each other. This is the result. 
This is exactly the same field of view. You can see the fringing is gone. The red stars look acceptable. I mean, this is zoomed in at two to one. Um, this this big blue star um, looks pretty good now. Um, the overall galaxy looks a lot cleaner. And you can see that you're going to be able to bring a whole lot more detail out of that compared to the first one. It's just so much better. Um, now, naturally, the other handy thing about um, stacking one-shot color images into separate channels is it's, it's, I think, good practice to do things that you would do in a linear stage on the separate red, green, and blue channels. So you can extract background um, from the separate channels. You can undertake some noise reduction. Or you can do some deconvolution. Um, whatever you would usually do. Um, uh, um, and you've already got the separate channels produced. You don't have to separate the channels after the fact. Um, so I tell you what, it's an absolute game changer from my point of view. Um, there are a lot of um, uh, what we consider in Australia northern targets that are that um, I will always get chromatic aberration when I image them. There's just so much atmosphere in the way. Um, and so it's nice to know that I can produce even cleaner images um, with this new feature that PixInsight have included in the latest update. So credit to the team. Um, uh, one other thing that I noticed, um, these hot pixels disappeared. I didn't do anything to this image that would um, would have made them go. It's, um, it's, it's, I suppose the pixel rejection has been able to work more effectively by stacking the individual channels um, than it did when it stacks them all together. Um, so um, we got fries with that. Okay, I hope this has been helpful for you. It certainly is for me. Uh, if, if it has, leave a like, subscribe, help the channel grow, and I'll see you next time. Clear skies.